On today's program of Zola Levitt Presents, we'll take you again to Auschwitz and you'll see the depths of depravity and it will also take you to Israel and the heights of humanity. Stay with us. I will console those who mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of Adonai, that he may be glorified. Shalom Chavarim. Welcome, friends. I'm Miles Weiss. And I'm Catherine Weiss, and welcome to our series, Beauty for Ashes. In this series, we take you to the horror of the Holocaust, and then we also show you the hope, which is Israel. It is so applicable that they even have their national anthem is Hatikva, the hope. Yes. You know, a question that has to come to mind, and certainly came to the minds of those that went through this, is where was God? Right. Were we abandoned? Did God forget us? Did He forsake us? And that was a natural question that many people ask and still ask about that time period. Mm -hmm. You know, so in this program that you're about to see, this was one of the most difficult ones we had to do. Absolutely. The entire series was hard to do at Auschwitz-Birkenau, but in this one, I had to go yeah. into the crematorium in order to speak to you from the place that remained standing mm -hmm. where the actual crematorium stood and where the bodies were burned. Right. Uh, it was the hardest thing I've done in my ministry life and we feel obligated to bring you this story. We need to document this yes. as the Holocaust generation is passing from the scene and also show how God's redemption brings beauty for ashes as the nation of Israel, the people of Israel are restored to our land and to the beauty that Israel's, is Israel. So let's go now to Auschwitz. coming to you out of respect for my ancestors and an obligation to you as our viewers. I feel supremely unqualified to stand here as somebody who has had a very comfortable life. But I am in the crematorium one at Auschwitz. Holocaust deniers today are either deniers or minimizers. Some say it never happened, which is absurd, of course. Some say, oh, well, there couldn't have been gas chambers and crematoriums. There's no such thing. I'm standing in the first one. This was an operation mostly from 1941 to 1943. Initially, Soviet prisoners, Polish prisoners, political prisoners, so-called, who had committed no crimes in general. Uh, were exterminated and then their bodies were brought in on this conveyor belt and then the bodies, the corpses would be shoved through these areas into these ovens, burned to ash and then the ash would be distributed elsewhere. It's unfathomable, it's very hard to be here. The eminent Jewish philosopher Emil Fackenheim wrote a wonderful book called To Mend the World, trying to make sense out of this era. One of the things he said was that, yes, there were political prisoners. Yes, it was war. Yes, it, all of that is true. But it was only the Jewish people whose crime was having Jewish blood. And there were, of course, trumped up charges against Jews as well to get them here. But you cannot overlook the 
the systematic extermination of six million Jewish people without recognizing that it was an operation scientifically put together by the civilized country of Germany. And in fact, they could come here, do this work all day, and then go home and listen to the greatest music of the world, Beethoven, Bach, and read Goethe and Schiller. And the dichotomy cannot be explained in any other way but by looking at it spiritually, ultimately, and seeing that we live in a world with good and evil. Sometimes I look at these events, the, the mentality of the German people at the time, and, and as, a, as a therapist, I look at, try to look at it psycho psychologically, but psychology cannot explain the massive levels of compartmentalization and denial. You think about what Yeshua said in Matthew 7, 5, to, to take the beam out of your own eye before you try to take the mm. speck out of someone else's eye. And there's this... And, and woe to those who call good evil and evil good. Isaiah 5.20, that, that yeah. uh, we're, we have this capacity as humans yeah. to, to be in a, just a huge amount of denial mm -hmm. about the evil that we're participating in. Mm. Miles, that's so true. We'll be back after this. We hope you are enjoying our series, Beauty for Ashes, as we contrast the horrors of the Holocaust with the miracle of modern Israel. Get this series for yourself or to share with friends. Just call us at 1-800-WONDERS or go to levitt.com and ask for the DVD series, Beauty for Ashes. Hi, you know, a lot of things are going on in the world today and especially in Israel. And this news needs to be told through this lens. That's what we do here at Zola Levitt Presents and we're only able to do it because of your generous donations. We just wanted to remind you, please keep giving as you are able, and we will keep doing what we do as well. Thank you so much. This ministry has been one of the earliest proponents of teaching the Jewish roots of the Christian faith. We've been doing it since the 1970s, right. and we're really involved with ministries throughout Israel, life-giving ministries, social work ministries. We're right. really involved in helping to see this work come to pass that God himself has begun, right. which is the restoration of the land of Israel, the Jewish people, and the grafting in of all mm -hmm. those who believe. Right, right. Well, we know that you watch this program because that's your heart too, that you love Israel, you love supporting Israel, and we want to thank you for partnering with us. Let's go now to hear Miles at the Museum in Israel. We're here at the Israel Museum, at the risk of sounding a little bit like Adam Sandler singing the Hanukkah song, the fact is that Jewish people have been at the forefront of every kind of art form since the beginning of time. And Israel is one of the most prolific places from which art generates. Think about the writers that you've read over the years, Isaac Asimov, the science fiction writer, Isaac Bashevis Singer, talking about Hebrew culture and Jewish culture in the old country, in Europe. What about some popular musicians, Bob Dylan, Robert Zimmerman, Leonard Cohen, Barbara Streisand, Paul Simon, all Jewish people, all related to this restoration and this release of beauty, this release of power, the release of art that comes through the Jewish people all over the world. Fantastic writers of of Broadway shows and directors like Leonard Bernstein, West Side Story, and all the actors that you've seen throughout, many of whom you don't even realize are Jewish people. They're Lanzmann, they're part of the family. Paul Newman, going back many years, Paul Muni, Dustin Hoffman. And throughout every era of life, every part of life, this creativity, this desire to 
be part of tikkun olam, of making the world a better place, a more beautiful place, a more restored place, of giving something back, of restoring that which has been broken, I believe, by the fall of man as we see in Genesis, but also over the years as people drift further and further from God. And now throughout history, throughout the world, people coming back to and bringing forth creativity in every sphere of life. This is a visual arts center, but the arts of all kind have been connected to the Jewish people forever. Not to mention the intellectual contributions of everyone from the least to the greatest. Albert Einstein, one of the greatest thinkers of all time, part of this restoration, part of the desire of the human mind to reach for that which is coming down from heaven and touching the human spirit. So here we are at the Israel Museum, a good place to speak about the contribution of Jewish people to the arts, to literature, to sports, to every sphere of life as we participate in making the world a better place. It's important to remember that even though our story is out of the ashes, out of the horror of the Holocaust, that the promise of love, the promise of Abraham's children being a blessing to the entire earth goes way back 4,000 years to Genesis 12, 1 through 3, where the promise is that God would bless those who bless the children of Abraham, curse those who curse the children of Abraham. That's why cultures have disappeared from the earth based on whether they loved or hated Abraham and his sons. And now we see the power of love in the arts, in the incredible manifestation of beauty that is modern Israel. Yeah, we are here in the Israel Museum. It's also called the Shrine of the Book. The Dead Sea Scrolls, the copy of the Dead Sea Scrolls are kept here. And when you come here, you can come and see them. They're amazing. And it's the restoration that we're talking about. It's out of the ashes to life. It's, the, it's what um, Ezekiel prophesied. He prophesied that the dead bones would come back to life. What is a dry bone? It's something without marrow. It's something without blood. But God has brought the Jewish people back. He has breathed his life on them. He has called them into his, his, his way, his, his life. And he has given them the ability to love beyond hate. Mm -hmm. Hate is such a, a, a diminishing thing diminishing um, degree of yes. what people have. Yes. When you love, you expand, you grow, you multiply. Yeah. You know, when I think about the Israeli art, I think about that it's always focused on family and, mm -hmm. and on faith, mm -hmm. on future. Yes. And it's focused on things that are above and it's focused on things that bring joy. Yeah. It's so amazing. There's so many people that, I mean, so many, Yerushalayim is the painting of two Jerusalems, one coming down and the Jerusalem that's here. It's mm -hmm. actually a prophetic painting. Yes. And then there's there's so many. There's the there's the pomegranate that speaks of the quintessential fruit of the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. Of that they wish that you would have a fruitful and a blessed new year. Yeah. There's so many beautiful things. Miles. One of my favorite pa painters is Marc Chagall, a hero of the early 20th century. His paintings have mystical pictures within them of the connection between the Jewish people and Yeshua the Jewish people and the history of yeah. this land, uh, a very mystical and beautiful sense of art. His stained glass windows are in the hospital here and this incredible tapestry of his is in the Knesset. It's enormous. One of my favorite artists of all time. You know, there's something very interesting about the word love. In English, it's hard to understand what people mean when they say they, they love a donut as much as they love a person. But in Hebrew, there is Ra, there's the friend, the Reut, the, the friend like Ruth. There's the Ahava, the love that, that is, is, is love that is expansive. And then beyond that, there's of course the Dodi. There is the Ani le Dodi vedodi li. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. Speaking not only of man and woman, but also of God and humankind. And so we would leave you with that thought. 
Anila Dodi Vidodi Lee. For insightful perspectives on Israel and Bible prophecy, ask for our free monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. At levitt.com you can read the newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit our online store. Stay current with us on social media via Facebook and Twitter. Come with us on a tour of Israel or Petra, or a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. You know, when you come with us to Israel, you'll see the ancient and the modern, and you'll see how this tiny little nation has come forth to such beauty and such grace, even in the face of difficulty. The hand of God is on these people and on this place, Miles. Yeah, I think we see from even this particular series that the, the will to survive is connected to the innovation and to the arts and to the beauty that's produced because there's just this sense of l'chaim to life right. that we have this, this desire to see life and life expand. You know, Joseph Bau is one of the key artists that helped in the effort in moving, transitioning from the horror of the Holocaust into the beauty of current Israel. And we actually had a chance to visit the museum dedicated to him by his children. It's the Bau Museum in Tel Aviv. Let's go there now. look at the arts being restored and the beauty of artistic endeavor being reclaimed for Israel without understanding the cost that was paid and some of the ironic pieces of art that came to be here in Israel after the war actually began during the war. We see here an outrageous picture done by Joseph Bau. Joseph and Rebecca Bau had a lifelong love affair that included a way of of attaining sanity in the face of the Auschwitz death camp by, in this case, making a mockery of the, the death of the Jews becoming smoke going up into the air, a very painful and difficult view of what was happening in that particular death camp. But as we shift over here to life itself, you see a mural of their entire family and the goodness of life after the Holocaust when they were rescued when they were found, they had daughters, family, growth among the family members, and it developed a wonderful life here in Israel. This whole story is told with humor, with irony, with sarcasm. Let's go into Joseph's studio and take a look at some of the works that he's famous for. This is a very humble studio, but contains some very profound artworks. Here again we see pictures of Joseph and Rebecca as they are being saved out of the Holocaust. You know, if you saw Schindler's List, it was actually this couple who got married in Schindler's factory in the movie. Not exactly cinematically accurate because they got married in the concentration camp, but Spielberg used it in a dramatic sense to take a respite, a moment in time when something good could come in the middle of the Holocaust. Our parents, uh, they met inside Plaschau concentration camp. Our father, God dressed as a woman, smuggled himself into the women's camp, and that's how they got married secretly. Now, the wedding was very unique. I, I think it's the only wedding. And it, not only it was from love to each other, it was from the love for all the people around them, because they wanted to show people that life continues, they are getting married, they lifted their spirits. 
and our father was an artist, and he saved hundreds of Jews, he forged documents for them. And from the underground, they came to him and they said, forge for yourself a document and run away. So he said, but if I run away, who will save the others? And he stayed till the last day. Someone asked him after the war, tell me, aren't you sorry? You could have escaped and not suffer for five years. So he said, but if I had escaped, how would I have met my wife? Well, Joseph Bauer dedicated himself to something good, which was the renaissance of all kinds of cartoon art with a sarcastic touch, with a, a humorous touch. Up here we see the, the absurdity of, of uh, lipsticks being changed into changed from bullets into lipsticks. And the words in Hebrew are very similar, and so it, it has a, an ironic message to those around that wouldn't it be wonderful when the day comes when instead of making bullets, we are making lipsticks so that love and not war is the effect of these international difficulties. We see the dove of peace slightly out of the grasp of the hand of the man. We see here that the upward climb for peace and the seeming impossibility of achieving peace and the, 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 the devastation of what was lost in music as this uh, musician is trying to play his bass cello with a saw and the probability of things being lost. Over here we see the sharing within the death camps as people shared what little they had to stay alive. And, and here Joseph Bao himself is carving himself out of a piece of rock, a statement about our having to mold ourselves into the likeness and image that God has for us. And our museum is open seven days a week. <laughs> you only have to book a visit in advance. And when people come here, they see, first of all, they hear their story, unique story, but they see what he created here in Israel. He was like an entrepreneur. He started from scratch, everything. He built the smallest movie theater in the world. He was the first animator in Israel. And, uh, and people come and they see this beautiful, uh, unique museum that is the only museum of its kind in the world because it combines uh, the love to Israel, the love to the Hebrew language, Holocaust, uh, forgery. Uh, he worked for the Mossad. He was the main uh, graphic artist of the Mossad who forged documents for all the spies. Mm -hmm. He, uh, and, and it's a lot of humor and animation and the smallest movie theater in the world and everything is in this little museum. Throughout his work, he used humor, sarcasm and interest to make it possible for people to take a longer view of this tragedy and to do something with it that was positive, to say, yes, it's terrible now, it's absurd, it makes no sense, but I can, through my art, make sense out of this. Also, our mother, they too always told us, every 10 minutes, we need to laugh. <laughs> that this is the most important. That this is like the exercise inside your body to laugh, to clean, not to think about bad things. And they were born like that. Today, people learn that. They were always like that. And not only they told us, they taught all the people to behave like that. This is the museum of happiness and laughter. And uh, always our father told jokes and he created every day a new joke. And he came to our mother and he told her the new joke. And if she laughed, <laughs> so he erased the joke because this was not enough joke, I love laughter. But if she laughed, <laughs> like something so big, like, okay, this joke is good. Our father, he taught us to tell their story, to go to all the world, to make people happy, and that they will laugh because he said that people that are happy and laugh a lot never will think about war and to kill somebody. Our parents were talking about the Holocaust every day. That's why they were so different from others who didn't talk. 
they said we must talk about it. Because in 50 years, if someone will get up and say the Holocaust didn't exist, where are the proofs? So they spoke and they encouraged other people to speak. That's why our father wrote his memoirs in a book, Dear God, Have You Ever Gone Hungry? And, uh, but they were telling it in a unique way because he, they were telling us what happened, but there were always jokes. So it wasn't a, a burden for us, the opposite. You see, we continue, we tell the story and we encourage others to tell. So here we are, the Bau Museum in Tel Aviv. It's a landmark that you should know about. One small example of the incredible artistic endeavor that kept the spirit of the Jewish people alive during the Holocaust. Sometimes these programs can feel like we're on a roller coaster ride, going into the depths of hell and into the heights of heaven. But really, there is the overarching theme of God's love for his people, God's love for mm -hmm. those who he calls the whole world to love him in return. And I think about the, the seminal Hebrew prayer, prayer from Deuteronomy 6, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. It goes on, that means hero Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. But it goes on to say, You shall love the Lord your God with all your mm. heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And that is what is desiring, what God is desiring to come right. back towards Him because He first loved us. Yeah. Love, faith, and hope. Mm. These three things abide. Mm. And these, as believers, we are called to walk in. So, Miles, we need a fresh infilling of love. Yeah. We need to be like the Israelis mm -hmm. and have hope against hope. Mm -hmm. And we need to stand fast like Daniel did in yes. the face of difficulties. Yes. You know, we have all the examples that we need in the scripture yes. and then in modern life. Mm -hmm. And so, may the Lord give us His grace to stand firm in these days. That's good, yes. And speaking of standing firm, that's why every time we end the program, we always remind you, Shalu, Shalom, Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter, is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective. Visit levitt.com to find our newsletter, along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Don't forget to order this week's resource by calling 1-800-WONDERS or you can purchase it from our catalog at levitt.com. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Please remember Zola Levitt Ministries depends on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. program by Zola Levitt Ministries.